Hey everybody, it's David. Just uh, made a quick trip to the trash can and uh, I'm out here catching a little fresh air. It is beautiful, the snow is falling, despite the fact that the forecast repeatedly have told us that there will be no more snow. We are having an epic winter here in the Midwest. And uh, today we're gonna do a backbending practice. Um, we're going to work on a fun transition from Ustrasana camel pose to Urdhva Dhanurasana. Um, of course, uh, this transition might not be right for everybody, so uh, don't sweat it if you don't get it today. Um, there's no need to get it ever, really. But uh, hopefully, we'll be able to have some fun exploring the backbending shapes, build some strength in our legs, open up our chest a little bit, and um, get down. And before we begin, Here's B on the rings. All right, here we go. Grab your blocks and I'll see you on the mat. We're going to do a practice at the wall today. So set the short edge of your mat up close to a wall. Um, if you need to clear off any pictures or any side cables, So as you come down into your child's pose today, take your knees maybe a little bit wider than your hips. So that creates some space in your low back, more space in your low back, takes the pressure off your knees. And if you find that you don't have enough space in your low back or in your knees to lower your hips down toward your heels, you can leave them high for now, setting up more with your hips above your knees. And just allow your forehead to come down on something, maybe the mat. And if not the mat, you can stack one or two yoga blocks underneath your forehead or maybe your hands. But set yourself up so that you can allow your head to release. So you really want to focus on creating this feeling of being able just to completely let go into the mat, just surrender into the mat so that while this child's pose generates a lot of sensation, we don't want to be working in our bodies to try to sustain the shape. So we want to be able to just let go into it so that we can start to turn our attention inward. Begin in your practice of Pratyahara. Observing the sensations of your body against the mat and any props. And then starting to notice in your body any places where you have maybe any tweaks or soreness, tight spots that might be calling for your attention. And then start to notice the energetic quality of your body. You feel ready to go. You feel anxious, wiry. Feel sluggish, just whatever it is, just noticing it. You don't need to do anything to try to change it or alter your experience in any way. Feeling the temperature of the air on your skin. Noticing any sounds in the room. Start to notice your breathing. Again, without shaking or altering your breathing in any way at this time. Just noticing the way the breath is moving through the body. All right, then when you're ready, let's go ahead and come seated. You can sit in Vajrasana Thunderbolt pose like I'm sitting or you can sit on your bottoms on the mat or on a block. We'll bring our palms together in prayer position, Anjali Mudra. Let's take a moment to consider your Sankalpa. 
for the day, your intention, starting with your short-term intention, what do you need from the practice today to help bring you into a state of harmony? And then taking a moment to consider where you would like the practice to take you in the long run, sometimes called your heart's desire. And you may find that it's helpful for you to formulate this in a short declarative sentence in the present tense. I am peace. I am loving kindness. I am awake and aware. Whatever it is for you. Try not to be too tight about it. Let's go ahead and start to let yourself feel into that presence of awakening that's already there, already with you. And trusting that this practice will serve your highest intention, will seal that intention and set the context for what follows by chanting the Shantipat from the Yajurveda. Shantipat is usually translated as falling down into peace, and the translation of this Shantipat is, may we be protected, may we be nourished, may we work together with great energy, may our study together be brilliant and effective, and may there be no animosity among us. Just seeing as you move, if you can continue to keep the breath slow and smooth and even, and try to make the movements smooth so that they support the breathing and focus on improving the quality of the movement as you move. Just a little bit more fluidity. Exploring those places where you feel some kinks in your kinetic chains. Good, and then coming back to neutral on your exhalation, let's sink back down to child's pose. And then we'll inhale forward. The tabletop, look past the front of the mat, arch your back. And then exhale back down. And then inhale forward. 
keep moving this way with your own breath. See if you can stretch the breath and make each breath last just a little bit longer than the movement. And after a few rounds, you may find when you inhale and come forward, you may want to drop your hips and lift your chest and come into more of a modified up dog shape. But don't be in a rush. Be mindful of what's happening in your low back and your shoulders and your neck. Try to use the movement skillfully to wake up your body, honor your intention and the condition of your body today at this time. Next time you come back to child's pose, slide your fingers underneath the long edges of the mat, grip your mat, and pull your hands apart as if you're trying to rip the mat in half down the middle. Continue breathing, feel those muscles, the backs of your shoulders and your upper back starting to turn on. Good, and then inhaling back up to neutral. Swap both hands over to the right. And then plant your hands down on the floor about shoulder width apart. And then start to sink your hips back down towards child's pose. Once you're here, shift your shoulders, placing one armpit down into the floor and then the other. And then after a couple of rounds of exploring this way, just allow yourself to sink into a more static stretch. Breathing here, observing the sensations in your shoulders, your side body, wherever you're feeling, with the most. And then inhale back up to neutral, walk to the other side, both hands over to the left, hands about shoulder width apart, and then drop your hips back down towards your heels. Feel that lengthening in the shoulders, the side body. Rock a little bit, side to side, and the armpit goes down and then the other. Exploring, breathing, keeping the mind in the body, with the breath, with the sensations, and then settling into a static stretch. Neutral. Turn your palms or fingers around so that your fingers point toward your knees. You may need to walk your knees up towards your fingers if this is too intense. Otherwise, once you've found a place where you feel like you can work, you can start to just shift back and forth and then exploring, waking up the forearms, waking up the wrists. down onto the mat. Step your feet back for forearm plank. So hips are just a little bit lower than your shoulder blades. Press down evenly through both sides of the body. Squeeze your feet together. Roll your inner leg lines up towards the ceiling. We're going to breathe here. Building a little heat in the body. Practicing tapas. Stay here, 
hips down to the mat. Elbows should be underneath the shoulders. Sphinx pose here. Lift up through the crown of your head. Let your shoulders drop down away from your ears. Let your low back sink down toward the floor. And then bend your knees and make some circles with your feet. So you want to think about circumducting the femurs inside the hip joint, moving the heads of the femurs around so that your whole leg is moving. And then switch directions. down underneath your shoulders as if you're going to do a push-up and then we'll extend the left arm first today uh, palm facing down at about a 45 degree angle so kind of off the top corner of your mat and then imagine you're holding a glass of water and tip that glass of water over so that you roll the back of your hand toward the mat pinky finger moving toward the floor rather and then from here just bring your right ear down and we'll roll to the right any amount it might not be much so you're creating an internal rotation of the shoulder and then amplifying the stretch by lifting your right hip up off the mat. So you can see I've dropped my right foot behind my left leg. If that feels appropriate for you, go ahead. Keep grinding down through the right hand, pressing down into the mat. Coming back to neutral, left hand comes back down underneath the left shoulder, right arm extends out 45 degree angle, tip that glass of water over, create the internal rotation in your shoulder, bring your right ear down to the mat, and then rolling to your right any amount, maybe picking up that left leg and dropping it behind the right leg, lengthening out the bicep in front of the shoulder, creating that internal rotation. Breathing into the sensation. All right, and then coming back to the mat, bring your palms down flat on the mat, tops of the feet uh, flat on the mat as well, and then inhale, lift the head and the chest, take a breath here, and if it feels safe on your low back, Pick up your feet, your knees, breathing here, maybe hovering the hands up off the mat. And as you do, as you pick your hands up off the mat, find that engagement in the upper back again, the back of the shoulders, so that we feel an even engagement energetically of the entire back body, all the way to the back of the neck, the back of the shoulders, upper back, mid back, low back, both sides of the glute, Right and left, check to make sure that they're both firing. The hamstrings, the calves, all the way down to the tips of your pointed toes. Just feeling that back body wake up. Good, and then lowering down to the mat. Walk both of your arms out to the sides of the mat. Uh, come onto your fingertips, pop your elbows up over your wrists, and then inhale, press yourself up into Cobra again. So you can use your arms a little bit, but you won't be able to use them as much. Feel how the back body has to conspire. Press yourself up a little higher, shoulders dropping down away from the ears, crown of the head lifting, breathing. All right, exhale, lower down. Bring your hands back down to the mat, curl your toes under, press yourself back up through the neutral table, and take downward facing dog. First downward facing dog of the day. You want to explore in your shape a little bit, go ahead. You can pedal out your heels, shift your hips side from side to side. Continue with your breathing practice. And if it feels good <coughs> to settle back into a static stretch, go ahead and do that whenever you're ready. And then let's pick up the right leg and walk it up the wall behind you. Press the ball mount of your right foot 
into the leg. So you're pressing the big toes, bottom of the big toes, and all four of the other toes against the wall, wall mount as well, pressing down through your hands, feeling that added length. Good, and then coming back from neutral, push it to the other side, so the left foot comes up. Press those ball mounts, all four toes, four or five toes, into the wall behind you, lengthening out the left leg, lengthening out the right leg. Good, and then returning back to a neutral. On your next exhalation, let's step the right foot inside of the right hand. Bring your back knee, top of your back foot down to the mat. We'll walk our hands up to the top of the right thigh, and then exhale, shoot your weight forward. Inhale back up. Just keep moving this way. Next time you come back to neutral, weave your fingers together behind your low back, press your knuckles down toward the floor, roll your shoulders back and down, shoulder blades squeezed together, chest is lifted, eye gaze goes up towards the ceiling, keep the back of your neck long, and imagine that you're trying to create as much length in the spine as possible, rather than trying to create a huge bend in your back. Keep breathing. Exhaling the left hand down. If you like, you can curl the right toes under. Pick, or left toes under, curl, or pick the left knee up off the mat. We'll take a simple twist to your right. So right arm extends up toward the ceiling. And then on your next exhalation, go ahead and reach the right arm over the right ear. Create that radial shape with your upper body. Feel that length between your fingertips and your shoulder, and then the length between your shoulder and your hip. Inhale, reach back up, twist a little deeper, and then exhale, extend. Move back and forth between the shapes a few times. Next exhalation, right hand comes down. Let's step the right foot back to meet the left. Inhale the shoulders over the wrist. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, slide your hands forward. Press your palms down toward the mat. Modify cobra. Exhale, lower down. Take an inhale here. And then on your next exhalation, press yourself right up into plank. Shift your hips back and down and facing dog. Breathing here. The bottom of your next exhalation, step your left foot forward inside your left thumb, right knee, top of the right foot come down to the mat, hands come to the top of your left thigh, exhale, shift the weight forward, inhale back up, keep moving this way. Time you come into a more neutral position. Weave your fingers together behind your back and take the non habitual grip, other pinky on the bottom. Press your knuckles down, roll your shoulders back and down, lift the gaze, keep the back of the neck long, lengthening out the spine from the tip of the tail one all the way out through the crown of the head. Continue breathing.
releasing your right hand down to the mat. Curl your back toes under, lift your right knee off the mat if you did so on the other side. And then simple twist to your left, left arm extends. And then exhale, reach the left arm over the left ear. Find that radial shape with the upper body, creating the length between the fingertips and the shoulder. And then again, between the shoulder and the hip. And then we'll start to move. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, extend. Keep moving this way. Twisting, extending. The next time you exhale, left hand comes down. Step the left foot back to meet the right. Inhale, the shoulders over the wrist. Exhale, lower all the way down. Tops of the feet come down. Slide the hands forward. Inhale, modify cobra. Exhale, lower down. Take an inhale here, curl the toes under. Exhale, press yourself up in a plank and shift yourself back. For downward facing dog. Breathing in. The bottom of your next exhalation, step or hop your feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen out the spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Exhale, mountain pose. All right, we'll move through a few rounds of modified Surya Namaskara C. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold, hinge at the hips, bend your knees. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step your left foot back. And inhale, rise up. Exhale, both hands down to the mat. Step your front foot back into plank and lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take an inhale here. And at the bottom of your exhalation, step your left foot forward. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. Exhale, both hands down to the mat. Step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Exhale, mountain pose. Other side. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, right foot steps back. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, both hands down to the mat, step back into Chaturanga and lower down with control. Inhale, Cobra, maybe up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take an inhale here. And at the bottom of your exhalation, step your right foot forward. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. Exhale, both hands down to the mat, step your back foot forward. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Exhale, mountain pose. Let's do one more round. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, left foot steps back. Inhale, high. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga, don't rush. Cobra or up dog. Downward facing dog. Resting breath here. At the bottom of your exhalation, step your left foot forward. Inhale, rise up. 
Exhale, step forward into your forward fold. Extend the spine. Release. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Exhale, mountain pose. Reach up. steps back, high lunge. Both hands down to the mat, lower down, chaturanga dandasana. Cobra or maybe up dog, downward facing dog. Resting breath here. The bottom of your exhalation, step your right foot forward, rise up high lunge. Exhale, both hands down to the mat, forward fold, lengthen the spine, forward fold, release, inhale, rise up, reach up, exhale, mountain pose, palms turn to face the front of the room, close your eyes, watch your breathing, and try to Remain perfectly still as you smooth out the breath. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. top of your left foot down to the mat and then plant down through your left hand and we'll take a twist to your right. The right hand can come to the top of your thigh at the start and then when you're ready go ahead and bend through your back knee. Reach back with your right hand, grab for the outside of your right foot with your hand or maybe with a strap around your ankle. And breathe here. that. Let's bring both hands down to the mat. Step your back foot up to meet the front. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step your right foot back. Right knee, top of the right foot, come down to the mat. Right hand plants, left hand to the thigh, twist. Bend through the back leg, engage the glutes, engage the hamstring. Maybe reaching back with the left hand for the outside of the right foot. Continue breathing, continue lengthening. All right, releasing your back foot, bring your left hand down to the mat, step your back foot up to meet the front, inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana. You can bring your feet together, sink your hips, lift your heart, chair pose. Sit down a little lower than you want to. And then bring your arms out into a T formation or a goal post formation. Rather. 90 degree bend at the elbows. Press the back of your hands back, the elbows as well. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Lengthen out the neck. Sit a little lower. Continue breathing. Really charging up the legs. And then from here, shift your weight onto your right foot. Pick up your left foot and slow as it goes, step your left foot back into a high lunge. Lift the chest. Exhale, lower down. And then the knee touches. Come back up, inhale. Let's do a few rounds of split squats. Exhale, lower down. 
keep moving this way. time you exhale, find your high lunge. We're going to step forward right back into chair pose. Sink the hips, lift the chest, shift your weight onto your left foot, start to pick up your right foot, step back easy as it goes, lift the chest, high lunge, exhale lower down, inhale up. Keep moving this way with your own breath. Next exhalation, find your high lunge, shift your weight forward, step your back foot up to meet the front, Utkatasana, last time, you got it, exhale, forward fold. Separate your feet, slide your peace fingers and thumb around your big toe, Padangustasana, release the crown of the head, continue breathing. Let's go ahead and come down onto our knees, more toward the front of your mat, so you have some space behind you. We'll set up for a few rounds of Ustrasana, camel pose. So from your um, standing on your knees position, with the knees about hip width apart, tops of the feet be flat for now. Start to, without bending your back initially, Start to shift your weight back so that you feel the muscles over your pubic bone engage. And then, once you feel the muscles over your pubic bone engage, bring your hands to your low back so that they frame the sacrum, thumbs turned out to the side, and start to lift the chest. So we're really focusing on engaging the glutes, engaging the hamstring, making the legs really strong to help lengthen out the spine. So breathing here. Neutral. You can sit down in Thunderbolt pose, take a break. We're going to repeat this a few more times and we're going to make it a little bit more challenging each time. All right, so when you're ready, come on back up. Bring your hands to your sacrum, start to shift your weight back, feel the muscles over the pubic bone engage. And then when you're ready, just start to enter the back bend and shape. Use your legs. Press the tops of your feet down into the mat. Engage the glutes. Maybe hands come back down the back of your legs this time. Maybe you can reach back through your heels. back up into Ustrasana this time, curl your toes under and bring your hands to your heart. So same mechanics, tip your upper body back, feel the legs engage, and then start to lift the chest, keep the neck long, engage the legs, press your feet down into the floor, and then maybe extend your arms overhead. Breathing in. Inhale, come on back 
back up, and then grab your blocks, bring your blocks to the front of your mat, walk your knees back, and sit down in child's pose with your hands on top of your blocks, just letting your head drop down between your shoulders. Just finding some release here. back up through neutral. We're going to walk back toward the wall now. If you have sensitive knees, go ahead and grab yourself a blanket and press it up against the baseboard so that it's fairly flat. Or you can double up your mat along the baseboard. We're going to bring, we'll do the left leg first, bring your left knee against the juncture with the floor and the baseboard and then walk your hands back so the top of my foot is against the wall. And then from here, you're going to step your right foot forward. And maybe once you hear this will be enough for you. If you want to slide the blocks underneath your hands to create a little more space, you can. If you feel stable enough here, you can bring your hands up to the top of your right thigh and lift up. And you're feeling that length in the psoas, the front of the hips also through the quadriceps, the front of your thigh. Breathe in here and stay here. Or if you want to play around with bringing your arms out to a goal post formation, maybe seeing if you can bring the back of your head, your shoulder blades, the back of your hands and your elbows toward the wall. Remember, go at your own pace. Don't try to force anything, continue breathing. forward, bring your hands down to the floor, the blocks inside your right foot, shift your hips forward, lengthen out through the front of the hips, but this time you probably feel the stretch shifting into a different part of the front of the right side, or the left side of your body rather. So breathing here, if it feels good, you can roll into the outside of your right foot. Sole of your right foot down if it was lifted, then stay here and breathe, or maybe walk the hands back up on top of the thighs. This time, we're going to think about lifting the chest like we did in camel. Gauge your legs, kick against the wall, press down into the floor, lift your chest, maybe reach up overhead, and bring your hands toward the wall. It's more of a back bend in shape this time. Gauge your legs, continue breathing. Keep the neck calm. And then come on back down. Bring both hands down to the mat. Slide your back knee away from the wall a little bit. You may need to move your right foot forward as well. Curl your back toes under. We're going to press ourselves up into kind of modified three legged dog. Pressing the sole of your left foot, or the ball mounts of your left foot, against the wall. Right foot flat on the mat. All right, then from here, let's slow it down. We'll switch sides. Bring your right knee into that juncture with the baseboard and the floor. Use your blanket or your rolled up mat to support the knee if you need it. Try not to rest your weight on the kneecap. Should have said this on the other side, but the weight of your uh, back leg, where your back leg is making contact with the floor, should be above your knee, so more right at the sort of bottom of your thigh. And then, if it's available to you, step your left foot forward. You can stay here with your hands down inside of your left foot, or you can bring them up onto your thigh. A couple of breaths. 
that's here. Breathe into whatever you're feeling. down to the mat or the blocks inside of the left foot. Shift your hips forward, feeling the space where the front of your right side of your body is lengthening. Shift around, maybe rolling onto the outer edge of the left foot. To the thigh sole of the left foot comes back down. Maybe just coming back under the thigh, few breaths here, or reaching back to the wall, lift the chest, gauge the legs, kick the wall, kick the foot, press down into the floor. again. Bring your blocks down onto the mat, shoulder width apart. This time press your elbows near the front of your blocks. Walk your knees back and then drop your hips. Press your palms together in prayer position. Let your armpits sink down toward the floor. Breathe in here. back up. We're going to do our final round of camel, or at least our final round of camel in the middle of the mat. So set yourself up more toward the middle of the mat this time. Curl your toes under like we did before. Feet about hip width apart. Everything's the same. Bring your hands to Anjali Mudra and then start to shift your upper body back. Engage the legs and then reach back. Maybe see if you can find the wall this time. Press your palms in toward the wall. Press your legs down into the mat. Engage your glutes. Continue breathing. All right, inhale. Back up. Exhale down to a seated position. And then grab your blocks. We're going to set them up on the wall and we'll set them up at a 45 degree angle on the wall, at least as wide as your mat. If you have tight shoulders, push them out a little wider so that you have a little more space. We're going to work with Urdhva Dhanurasana. So coming down onto your back, 
head between the blocks, feet about hip width apart. You're going to bring your hands onto the blocks at an angle. And if you don't have a baseboard on your wall, something to prop your blocks on, just go ahead and set your blocks flat, probably on the shortest setting to begin with. So, either using the baseboard or blocks flat on the wall. So my hands are flat on the section of my blocks. My fingers are curled just around the bottom edge of the blocks because of the size of my hands. And then from here, press down through your feet. Engage the glutes. And then press into your arms and start to move your chest toward the wall. Continue breathing. Try to keep your elbows in, shoulders away from the ears, knees from splaying out. Once you're down, let your arms come out a comfortable distance from your side, and then just tuck your tailbone under, engage your belly, and press your low back down into the floor. Assuming that we're okay with the blocks on their lowest setting, you can play around with putting the blocks on a different setting. So I'm going to put mine on the medium setting against the wall in the same place. And then set myself up the same way, head close to the wall, feet close to the glutes, heels of the hands, this time I'm pressing them to the narrow edge of the top of the block, keeping the elbows rolled in, shoulders away from the ears, binding the feet, pressing down through the feet, engaging the glutes, and then pressing down through the hands, further down your arms, and then again, breathing here. chin, lower down, arms come out to the side, press the low back down into the floor, engage the stomach muscles. Go ahead and roll into your side. We'll come back up to standing on our knees. This time, we're going to face the wall. So, we're going to work on the transition from camel to Urdhva Dhanurasana. So if this does not feel like it's gonna be useful in your body, and just skip it for today. But if you want to play around with it and everything's been going okay, I'll tell now. Just start facing the wall and you can see I've set my blocks up behind me and I've stacked them up at a height that I know is appropriate for me. So I'm going to reach back through camel and put my head onto the top block and take a few breaths there. So you may have to play around with the length and of course, if any of this doesn't feel right, back off. If you repeat your camel play around with one of the earlier variations that we did, if you want to see how this looks, you can give it a try. So I'm going to curl my toes under. I'm going to bring my hands to Anjali Mudra, like we did in the last few variations. Mechanics are always the same. Upper body comes back, pubic bone engages, legs turn on, and then coming back, back, extending the arms, Finding the block, legs are still working, breathing here. Inhale up, head comes up last. 
Exhale, sitting back down into the Thunderbolt pose, catch your breath. All right, so assuming that went okay and you felt like you had enough space in your body to go a little bit further, I'm going to show the transition from camel to third Vidanyarasana. And this is sort of a matter of timing rather than building momentum. So you have to really be able to feel this in your body. If it doesn't feel right for you, again, skip it. You want to go slow and easy with back bends. And of course, when we're building a new skill, if this is new to you, it takes a while to figure out the mechanics in your body. So please be safe. Please be responsible and mindful about the limits of your body today. All right, so if you're coming into this transition, curl your toes under, starting with the hands in Anjali Mudra, pressing down through the feet, engaging the glutes, upper body comes back, pubic bone engages, lifting up with the chest, reaching back, your back, a few breaths here, and then, so if you want to go ahead and give it a try on your own, go ahead, maybe today you want to just repeat camel, maybe play around with the blocks underneath your head, it's up to you. If you are done back bending for the day and you're on your back, that's perfectly fine as well. So from here, Without using your arms, just pick up your feet, make some circles with the knees. And then switching directions. Press your low back down into the floor, engaging the muscles of your abdomen. And then from here, we'll work on a hollow body hold. So I'm going to turn around so you can see a little easier and I can see you or at least I can see the camera. Press the low back down into the ground. Extend your arms, pick up your head, tuck your chin, lift your shoulder blades off the ground. Pick your feet off the ground, 90 degree angle. If this is enough for you, stay here. Good, then maybe play around with extending the legs. back down, then we're all the way down, and we'll repeat that one more time. Press the low back down into the ground, extend the arms, tuck the chin, lift the shoulder blades, pick up the feet, maybe extend the legs, maybe this time play around with lowering the legs, keep the chin tucked, keep the low back on the ground if it starts to pop up, back off, bring your feet back up. Releasing back down onto the mat, let everything go. Arms come out to the side, feet come about mat width apart. Let both of your knees drop over to the right. Turn your eye gaze to your left. And then inhale back to center. Let both of your knees drop over to the left. Eye gaze turns to the right. Inhale back to center. And just 
Keep moving this way with your own breath. Once you've caught, done both sides an equal number of times, extend your legs long out on the mat in front of you. We'll bring our palms down alongside your hips. Squeeze your feet together. Press the back of your thighs down into the mat. Flex your feet. Spread your toes. Tuck your chin. And then we'll practice a few rounds of Tadaka Mudra. So you're going to exhale all the air out. You're going to suck your low belly in toward your spine and up. You're going to hold the air out for a few seconds as long as you Feel like you can handle it without creating strain in your body and then release your low belly let the air come back in through your nose and then repeat a few more times the idea again is not to create strain in your body or start to huff and puff you want to be able to breathe smoothly in between rounds so if you need to take a resting breath go ahead you're going to repeat it three or four times at your own pace when you're ready go ahead strong engagement of all three bandhas, mostly Uddiyana Bandha in the belly as you draw it in and up. The Jalandhara Bandha is naturally created by the shape of your head and engaging your pelvic floor is supported by pressing the back of your thighs down into the mat. So continue with your breath work. Once you finish the round that you're currently on, let's go ahead and settle back into your final resting pose. Making any adjustments that you need, or maybe just rolling the palms over and resting on your mat.
feel like you'd like to stay here a little longer, feel free to pause the video. Take as much time as you like or as you need. If you're ready to start moving, begin with the breath, deepening the inhalations and lengthening the exhalations, and adding a little bit of movement, your fingers and your toes, your wrists, your ankles, until you feel ready to bend your knees and find your way up to a comfortable seat. Take a moment, and once you find your comfortable seat, to make sure that you are balanced right to left on your sits bones. Make sure there's no gripping in your low belly and that you're supporting that neutral anterior or forward curve of your low back. Shoulder blades are dropping down the back, shoulders away from the ears, chin is slightly tucked, chest is lifted. And you can let your hands rest comfortably anywhere on your lap as you close your eyes. Release your tongue down from the roof of your mouth and then lightly press the tip of your tongue against the roof of your mouth today. We call this Nabha Mudra, so kind of right against the juncture of the hard palate and the soft palate with the tip of your tongue and let your lower jaw relax. Just breathing in and out comfortably through your nose. Next inhalation, start with your awareness down at the base of your spine, right at the tip of your tailbone, and draw your attention up the front of your spine so that at the top of your inhalation, your attention is resting in the crown of your head. And then on your exhalation, allow your attention to move down from the crown of your head down along the back of your spine all the way down to the tip of your tailbone. And just continue breathing in this pattern for a few rounds. See if you can start to become aware of the brief pause at the top of your inhalation and the brief pause at the bottom of your exhalation. Just noticing that this is a natural phase of the breath.
rounds are currently on. Bring your palms together in prayer position. Anjali Mudra at the level of your heart. And take one final moment for the practice of gratitude. Gratitude for the practice and gratitude for whatever it else there is in your life that fills you with that sense of gratitude. And you may have to move through a few things before you start to generate that feeling of gratitude in your body, but see if you can use your imagination, use your mind and your memory and your emotions to generate that feeling of gratitude in your physical body. You can cultivate this feeling every day start to become part of our baseline of experience. And close by chanting Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Inhale. ourselves, peace for our communities, peace for all beings everywhere. Namaste. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed the practice. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I hope to see you again soon.